Hi, my name is Nick Smallwood and I'm a consultant in acute medicine. In this video, we're going to take you through examples of thoracic pathology on ultrasound. In this upcoming video, we're going to cover the various lung pathologies that you will see during your time training in thoracic ultrasound. We're going to review very briefly some of the basic lung ultrasound concepts and then go through some common diagnoses, including lots of examples of how they look on ultrasound. Before we do that, I think it's important to focus on what a normal lung base looks like because you're going to get very used to seeing lots of abnormal lung bases. And this is an example of the curtain sign where you can see the aerated lung comes from left to right across the picture as the patient breathes in and out. And behind it, you can see the liver and the kidney. It's important to remember that in health, you don't see most of the diaphragm and certainly the first half to a third is not visible with normal aerated lungs. So anytime you see the diaphragm wrapping around the liver or spleen, you should think that there's some pathology in the base of the lung that's allowing the sound waves to pass through and reflect directly off the diaphragm. Now you've covered A lines already, but just to reiterate, they are horizontal and they're a normal reverberation artifact. They tend to imply that the lung is dry underneath. And in this example video, you can see the two ribs casting a rib shadow with the pleural line in between and multiple A line reverberation artifacts underneath. B lines, by contrast, are vertical. They tend to imply a high lung water or a wet lung. They obliterate A lines where they're present. And usually one to two posteriorly, so towards the lung bases, are not considered significant. They are absent in a pneumothorax. So if you see B lines, it effectively rules out pneumothorax. And you will see B lines in conditions like ARDS, left ventricular failure, and in pneumonia, including COVID pneumonia. And you can see multiple vertical B lines present in this slide, which move with respiration. And you'll see there's an absence of A lines. Lung sliding again, just to briefly cover, effectively means that the parietal and visceral pleura are opposed, closely opposed, so they're not separated by air or fluid. You will therefore lose lung sliding in pneumothorax and also other rarer conditions like inflammatory adherences, so very severely inflamed lung, very low tidal volumes, apnea, so when patients aren't breathing, or for example, in one lung ventilation. This video highlights lung sliding. And you will notice that the depth of this video is just four and a half centimeters to try and really highlight the lung as it's sliding. And in a second, we'll zoom in just to show in a bit more detail the marching advance or the pleura opposing across each other. In contrast, if we look at this video, you again can see the ribs casting a shadow and the pleural line, although it's not quite as clear. But when we play the video, you see there's no sliding across that pleural line. So this is the sort of appearance you would see in someone who has a pneumothorax. And the pathognomonic sign of a pneumothorax is this concept of a lung point. And again, we're going to show you a lung point here, but it effectively marks the edge of the pneumothorax where the pleura are separated by the air. So in the same rib space, you get both lung sliding and no lung sliding during the phases of respiration. If you see this, really the only condition that can generate that is a pneumothorax. And it helps you therefore to go down this decision tree to make the diagnosis. So if we start in the top left where there's is there lung sliding? If the answer is yes, then you've ruled out a pneumothorax. If there is no lung sliding, the next question is, are there B lines? And if there are, again, you've ruled out a pneumothorax. If you see no B lines, the next point to look for is a lung point. And if you positively identify a lung point, you have positively made the diagnosis of pneumothorax. If you don't see a lung point, the next thing to look for is a lung pulse. 
if you detect a lung pulse, that means the pleura must be opposed and therefore you've ruled out a pneumothorax. Whereas an absence of lung pulse with all the other signs suggests a diagnosis of a pneumothorax, although it's not definitive. So the next conditions we're going to focus on are pulmonary edema versus COVID and ARDS. And I'm bunching COVID and ARDS together because they give, broadly speaking, very similar lung ultrasound appearances. And the hallmark of both these conditions is the presence of B lines bilaterally. But there are differences. And they are that in pulmonary edema, you would anticipate the B lines being broadly symmetrical on both sides without any spared areas of lung. Whereas in COVID and ARDS, you get lots of sparing where there's normal lung right next to plenty of B lines. And in the same token, pulmonary edema is generally fairly homogenous. So you'll see large areas of B lines without anything in between, whereas COVID and ARDS is much more patchy. You would, of course, expect pulmonary edema to resolve with diuresis, whereas that wouldn't be the case with COVID and ARDS. And you may well find that echo findings are helpful in so much as pulmonary edema would tend to be associated with hypodynamic left ventricular function, i.e. depressed left ventricle, whereas you may well expect to see a hyperdynamic left ventricle or at least normal function with COVID or ARDS. And the final concept I want to introduce between these two conditions is the idea of peripheral consolidation, which we'll focus on next. Before we do that, I want to just highlight another example of B lines, which you can see on this cine, with multiple vertical ring down artifacts causing bright laser like lines which move with respiration. The idea of peripheral consolidation is that you get a discontinuity of the pleural line. And so, normally, you'd expect the pleural line to be smooth and flat and white. But if it becomes thickened or irregular, and in particular if it becomes discontinuous, that suggests a peripheral consolidation. It almost looks like a bite has been taken out of it, and there's a couple of examples coming out. It's sometimes called subpleural consolidation. I think that's a bit of a misnomer because really all consolidation is below the pleural line, but the terms are often used interchangeably. And it essentially represents a small portion of consolidation at the periphery of the lungs or potentially an infarct. So you will see small peripheral consolidations in conditions like pulmonary embolism, for example. And this video you can see on the top right hand corner highlighted here, a small area of peripheral consolidation. And as we play the cine, you can see that the pleural line in that area is discontinuous. And again, it almost looks like a bite has been taken out of it. And alongside that, you can see widespread B lines throughout the cycle and the rest of the pleural line looks thickened and irregular. So these appearances are typical for COVID pneumonia. Another example of that is available here, and again, in a similar position, we've got some peripheral consolidation, but you'll notice that right next door to the left of it, the portions of the respiratory cycle, the pleural line looks quite smooth and flat with A lines below it, and this patchiness is a hallmark of COVID pneumonia. Again, an example of COVID pneumonia with a thickened irregular pleural line, and almost small consolidations. And really, it's a spectrum of disease between a thickened pleural line and small peripheral consolidations. And arguably, both are present here. And on this final example of COVID, we can see what's called the waterfall sign, which is where a flush of bright white light comes into play with the respiratory cycle. But through the rest of the cycle, the pleural line looks relatively smooth and flat and there is an absence of B lines. You could almost be persuaded for thinking that there's a small peripheral consolidation, which is the source of this waterfall sign or light beam sign. So just a couple of other small points about COVID. Frank consolidation is rare, at least early on in the disease. Pleural effusions are unusual. Approximately 5% only of patients with COVID pneumonia have pleural effusions, again, at least early on in the disease. And the patchy nature of the B lines is striking. And that really sets it apart from most other conditions that we see routinely. And so that takes us on to what pneumonia looks like and what frank consolidation looks like. Now, early on in a pneumonic process, the hallmark would be focal B lines. So 
large numbers of bee lines which you see in a single lung zone or perhaps two lung zones on the same side would be consistent with pneumonia. But further on in the disease process, it becomes a little clearer. On this example, you can see a lung base with the diaphragm and the spleen highlighted and a small amount of pleural fluid. And then as we cycle through an irregular pleural line, the so-called shred sign, which becomes frank hepatized lung. And these are probably grades of consolidated lungs, such that the shred sign represents patches of aerated lung next to consolidated lung, whereas hepatized lung is where a whole zone has become filled with pus. And it looks much more like the liver or spleen, which usually abuts it. In all of these examples, you will notice that the diaphragm is fairly clearly marked and separates the border between the abdomen and the thoracic cavity. I've now got some further examples of consolidation again. You'll now get very familiar with looking at the spleen and the diaphragm which wraps around it with a portion of hepatized lung and some surrounding paraneumonic fluid. This is an example of the shred sign again with some small peripheral consolidations and you'll notice lots of ring down artifacts arising from the consolidation. Strictly speaking, these aren't bee lines because they don't arise from the pleural line, but the exact same concepts are generated to cause them. And again, an example of a densely consolidated portion of lung on the center of the screen with the spleen and the diaphragm to the right of the screen and a small amount of pleural fluid around it. You'll notice that occasionally within these examples of consolidation, you can see little white bubbles. These represent air bronchograms, so little pockets of air which are stuck within the lung. And where you see movement in these air bronchograms, then they are called dynamic air bronchograms, and we have an example next. But again, on this image, you can see lots of little white dots throughout the consolidated lung, and that tends to imply consolidation as opposed to compressive atelectasis. Whereas on this example here, you can see that the little white bubbles are moving up and down with respiration, so-called dynamic air bronchograms. And this would be the hallmark of a bacterial pneumonia because the movement of the air bronchograms implies patent airways right up to the main airways. So this cannot be atelectasis. And finally, another example of the shred sign with a liver and a diaphragm on the right-hand side and a small amount of pleural fluid. And now we move on to pleural effusions. The hallmark is that they tend to be anechoic, they tend to be gravitational, and so they sit down at the lung base. And as I mentioned right at the beginning of the talk, they will therefore generally allow the whole diaphragm to be visualized. And in this example here, we can see the spleen with the diaphragm wrapping around it, a small area of collapsed lung on the left of the image, and then the apex of the heart beating towards the base of the image. And then within all of that cavity, you can see a large anechoic or black area, which represents the pleural fluid. In this image, the collapsed lung has the appearance of a jellyfish or a fish tail. There are lots of different descriptors in lung ultrasound, but it effectively represents a portion of collapsed lung which is floating around in the pleural fluid. We then have a further example of a pleural effusion, but in this image you can see that there looks like there's little white dots floating in the pleural fluid. This represents likely a proteinaceous effusion, and if you're going to access this or drain it, you might consider using a relatively large bore drain to ensure that it doesn't get stuck. And some further examples of more complicated looking effusions. And we can see here again the spleen and the diaphragm. But in the portion of lung above the diaphragm, you can see mixed in with the black areas, you've got these bands of fibrin strands causing a complex or a loculated effusion. And this would tend to imply either infection or a long standing effusion, which has started to become organized. Again, if you were going to access this, Particularly if you are going to drain it, you might want to use a large bore drain because the chances of the drain getting blocked are high. 
And we've got a couple more examples of complicated effusions. Again, here you can see areas of anechoic fluid with lots of bright white bands, and this looks complicated. And in the right context, this would be consistent with empyema, but of course would just look like a simple effusion on plain radiography. And this brings us to the end of the examples of pathology you'll see during your lung scanning. Just to go over them one more time, in asthma or COPD, you would therefore expect to see an A-line profile throughout the lungs, i.e. normal sonographic lungs. In pulmonary embolism, you'll see the same thing, but the expectation would be that if you perform a DVT scan, you may well positively identify a DVT. And of course, if you undertook an echo, you might see signs of right heart strain. But the lungs themselves will look sonographically normal. Pulmonary edema tends to cause widespread B lines, which are bilateral and tend to be worse towards the bases. In pneumonia, you might see focal B lines, so unilateral B lines, and or peripheral consolidation and small effusions. COVID pneumonia will tend to cause patchy B lines with small consolidations and an irregular thickened pleural line with a relative absence of pleural effusions. And pneumothorax, as described, will cause A lines. You will see an absence of lung sliding. And if you're lucky, you will see a lung point, And this is positively diagnostic of a pneumothorax. And the final condition we've covered is pleural effusions, which tend to be anechoic. They tend to be towards the lung bases and they tend to allow you to see the diaphragm through them. They can be simple or complex on ultrasound, but in truth, the only way you can know for sure is to sample them. The other videos in this series take you through the theoretical aspects of lung ultrasound, and we also have a how-to video taking you through the practical aspects of lung ultrasound.